Oh, hey gang, welcome back to another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, so now that we've talked about Aldol reactions, whether it be just basic Aldol reactions or Aldol reactions in basic conditions with the condensation, or the Aldol reaction in acidic conditions with, you know, that goes to the condensation, now we're gonna kind of usher in yet another alpha carbon reaction called well, one that's specifically called the Michael addition, but more generically, this video will touch on what are called 1-4 additions, okay? So if you can call back, or if you have not watched yet, the uh, aldol reaction in, uh, you know, the condensations of any sort, right? At the end of those condensations, we created a new functional group that you can for short call an enone because of the fact that there's an alkene in there and a ketone presence or an aldol presence. This doesn't have to necessarily be um you know a ketone it can be an aldehyde but if you want to be like very generic and call it something that will always apply you can ca call it an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl or you can call it you know whether it's specifically a ketone or an aldehyde the reason why it's an alpha beta unsaturated it's because remember that first position away from the carbonyl is the alpha position and then as you go further away you just go down the greek alphabet so this would next be beta, right? So alpha beta, that's where the unsaturation is, the unit of unsaturation. And then you have a carbonyl, whether that be a, an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay, so why are these so special and what the heck is a 1,4 addition, right? So if we go back and lean on our resonance drawing skills, what I want to highlight here is if I were to, so it's no secret to us that oxygen loves negative charge. So we know even just with a regular carbonyl, we do this resonance move all the time. That's what, that's what explains the partial positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. But in this conjugated system effect, remember, delocalization of electrons. Well, that little alpha symbol got in the way. Try not to ruin my blue marker. We can also swing this, uh, this electron pair right here. In fact, you can almost think of it going over here and then kicking this up. The point, of the, the fact of the matter is, is that we have a resonance structure that can pr contributes pretty heavily to the overall hybrid of what we're seeing here. And what we actually end up seeing is that electron density gets put on the carbonyl carbon, making it a less electrophilic, but then we get more electrophilic or behavior, right? Lover of uh, negative charge on the fourth position. And what I mean by the fourth position is that you can number this little system starting with the oxygen, which is weird. We don't usually do that, but one, two, three, and four, right? So that's why, you know, that's kind of what's special about these enones, or if you want to call them uh, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. They're special because the resonance works out in such a way that we get a different carbon than we're used to uh, in terms of what we can attack nucleophilically, right? So before we kind of talk, I touch on more of these, I want to kind of, if you haven't talked about this in your classes or this is new, you know, this is new, just want to bring it up. So we can kind of have two classes of nucleophiles. They can be hard or they can be soft. And really what that means is how reactive they are. So the hard nucleophiles are ones you're used to. We're talking like a Grignard, right? CH3MGBR or CH3Li, your organolithiums or these Grignard reagents. And what I mean by that is that given an enone like this, or given a beta on, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, they like to do one, two additions. They're so reactive, they're still honed in on that carbonyl carbon. That's what they care about. And also in this class would be H minus hydride from lithium aluminum hydride because your hard nucleophiles are your most reactive. These are the crazy ones that, you know, they're just, they're ready to do anything. Soft is pretty much everything else. They like to do one, four additions. And literally what that means is they're gonna attack this carbon as opposed to the typical carbonyl carbon. So what we're about to see after I you know, wipe this board and clean it up is that if we have something like an enolate, what this enolate will do, it's not crazy reactive like the hard nucleophiles, it's a soft nucleophile. It's actually going to prefer and settle for that fourth carbon right there. And when you do a 1,4 addition, you can always call it a 1,4 addition, but when you do it specifically with an enolate, it's called Michael addition. So let me clean this up. We'll, I'll show you some Michael additions. Then I'll show you some just more generic 1-4 additions and we'll call it a video. Okay, gang. So if we take a look at what we got going on right here, this first step is going to at least look very familiar, right? 
we know we have a carbonyl. We have two, it's, it's asymmetric. We have two different type of unique alpha carbons. But, you know, we see a big bulky base, whether you use LDA or whether your class is using uh, TV toxide or whatever. And we see wicked, brr, chilly conditions, right? So this is going to say to us, we're going to make the easiest enolate we can. We're going to deprotonate the most easily accessible position. So what this really means for step one is we are generating this enolate right here and you can bring along a lithium spectator ion if you want. I tend to drop it. It's totally up to you. So now that we have our nucleophile after step one, this is where step two begins. Okay. So it's right here and I'm going to kind of flip this structure around just kind of like a pancake, but here's what we're going to be doing. Not just, so we, you can call this a one, four addition, but when it's an enolate attacking this alpha beta unsaturated here, it's a ketone, or if you want to call it an enone, you can. When it's enolate plus enone, it's a Michael addition, okay? So what happens is, remember, it's this, it's this alpha carbon that is in control of the electrons, right? We draw this enolate like this, but really it's this carbon that is going to be making the bond. It's the, you know, the one that's commanding these electrons. So the mechanistic flow is electrons swing down, you reform your carbonyl, okay, on the enolate. Then, to avoid breaking the octet rule, but also because this carbon is actually calling the shots, this carbon goes, I'm a soft nucleophile, I'm going to do a 1-4 addition. And remember, this is what we're numbering in terms of 1 and 4, right? You go ahead and attack over here. You have to have some sort of leaving group, otherwise you're going to break the octet. So now I'm going to erase these numbers, because what's going to happen is a little bit of a fun bouncing around. These electrons bump up here and form this bond, a double bond, a new carbon-carbon double bond. And then last but not least, to avoid breaking out tetral, you dump electrons on oxygen, and we know that's always a safe thing to do. So after you have this crazy aftermath, it's really easy to get lost in terms of what you actually did. The two carbons I dotted, there's a new bond there. So what I'm going to do is just draw this. I'm going to bring back that dot. The next line I draw is going to be to the other dotted carbon, okay? And now I can just kind of construct my ring around that. I know I line up here and then here. I can draw the rest of my six-membered ring. I have a new carbon-carbon double bond there. And then remember, I have an O minus. Now here's the thing, whether you're doing an actual Michael addition or a one four addition in general, right? Meaning you're not attacking with an enolate, just a different soft nucleophile. At this point, this other, you see that we generated an enolate and this just flips back to its carbonyl form. Think about it like in terms of like ketoenol tautomerism. This has no purpose. It's not going to attack anything else. It just, here it's, it would go back to a ketone. And if you want to think something, some source of H, you know, a proton will be around. I'm going to conveniently invent water and just have it be around here. Just know that something will be around. Oops, that's not what happens for these electrons to swing down. And then again, remember the alpha carbon to pick up a proton. This is just like a enolate to ketone tautomer step, okay? So what do we get? Because this is important. This is where I'm gonna go back into highlight relationship mode because this will serve you well in the future. And for the practice I have on my website, joechem.io, make sure to check out the linked worksheets with the videos that are on my website, not just here on YouTube. Okay. So if we have, this is our product, okay? What's key is that when you do a Michael addition, you will end up with a 1,5 dicarbonyl. That is your relationship. The carbonyl that was in your enolate and the carbonyl that was a part of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl or the enone, there will be a distance of five carbons between the carbonyl carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. Chef kiss. Okay, so this is very keys, because maybe in a synthesis problem, you're given a product where there's a 1,5 dicarbonyl relationship. And if you can recognize that and pick up that it's a Michael addition, your life will be better, easier, and you'll smile more. Studies have shown. Okay, so this is a Michael addition. Now what I want to do is just show you some examples of other soft nucleophiles, but then also just, uh, just, just a few problems. So let me clean this up and then uh, we'll do like three examples and then call it a video. Okay, gang, just three examples to drive off into the sunset on this video about Michael additions and more generically, 1-4 additions. Okay, so if we take a look right here, right up top, we see we have uh, carbonyl in the benzylic position, 
And even though this set of conditions, at least from what we've been talking about, screams make that thermodynamic enolate, we only really have one option to make the enolate, right? We only have one alpha carbon that's eligible for alpha deprotonation, and it's this carbon to the right because there are just no protons, you know, right there left of the carbonyl. So if you even want to think about it, the enolate we're going to make looks like this. And like I said, you have that counter ion, a counter ion up there. I'm choosing to just drop it. So then what are we attacking? Well, here we have, and, and you know, this technically isn't an enone. Some people might colloquially call it an enone. I can't even pronounce that word. Uh, this is, you know, an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, right? Still, there's that one four system right, where we have to work with either a hard nucleophile or a soft nucleophile, and here, right, we know enolates, they're not that crazy reactive compared to something like a Grignard or an organo lithium or, you know, LAH hydride. So what we're working with really is a 1,4 addition. So we're going to be attacking from this carbon, and we're going to be bonding to this carbon, right, because the system here is 1, 2, 3, and 4, 4 being that carbon I dotted. So what I like to do I'm gonna go ahead and redraw my enolate like that because it's going to recover the carbonyl. And I'm going to make sure I mark the carbon that actually attacked and use these electrons. Now, I'm gonna draw my line and the next line I draw will go to that dot carbon on what was the other structure which is now part of this structure. And now it's just a game of who is attached to whom. That's right, I said whom. So, on this carbon, we have two methyl groups. And from there, so I've taken care of that position, then I just have one, two more, so one, two, and then remember, yes, I could draw, so, so what this will look like initially is like this, but I know this will flip back to its carbonyl form, and I will get a carbonyl, and yes, it will still be an aldehyde, and if you're wondering, man, I wish there was a built-in check, well, I'm so glad you asked, because remember, this is a Michael addition specifically, we did a soft or we used a soft nucleophile, the soft nucleophile was an enolate, right? We did a 1,4 addition, enolate plus uh, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. That's a Michael addition. That's the more specific name. And we know we did it correctly because we have a 1,5, well, other things can go wrong too, but we did a 1,5, we got a 1,5 dicarbonyl in our product, okay? So that was more of what we talked about just right before. I did the little wipey wipe. Now, what do we have going on here? I wanted to highlight what might happen if someone does give you a hard nucleophile and an enone. So here, and let's real quick, I'm gonna ignore, I've been ignoring stereochemistry and I'm going to ignore the possibility that this double bond can get protonated, okay? So this is a hard nucleophile. This likes to do one, two addition. So this is exactly what you would do when you first learn Grignards. Learn about Grignards. So you would end up with this, because remember, all this screams to you is ET minus, it's super reactive, it finds that carbonyl carbon, and it will attack, okay? Now, down here, oh, I forgot this. So, this is such a popular reagent to use when you attack alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls, so I want, to, I want to bring it up, and if this isn't in your class, and you're like, Joe, what the heck is this? Don't worry about it. But, these are called cuprates. Cuprates are just less reactive organometallic nucleophile. So it's like a Grignard, but toned down. So a Grignard is a hard nucleophile, a cuprate is a soft nucleophile, okay? So if you're wondering what's the formula, how do you make them? You take an organolithium and you need two equivalents and you treat it with copper and a halogen of your choice, whether it be chlorine, okay, not, not your, all your choice, but bromine, iodine, or, or chlorine, okay? Chlorine, iodine, bro, yes. So what you get is you get, you know, the two R, the two R groups, those are your alkyl groups, ends up being supercharged. So supercharged meaning you get your nucleophile, but it's a soft nucleophile. And then you get, you know, it's attached to, but like when you see this right here, R2, C, U, L, I, think that you're gonna be using R minus. You only get one. And then you get like that counter ion. So a knock on cuprates is that you kind of waste half of a good nucle like you waste a good nucleophile because you need two to get a cuprate reagent that only allows you to attack with one. So really you throw in two organolithiums and you get one soft nucleophile out of it. So you kind of waste 50% of a nucleophile. But that's, I've seen that question asked before, 
That's why I bring it up. So what happens here? Well, when you see this, I still want you to think ET minus, just a less aggressive ET minus. And then you do a one, four addition like you normally would. You attack at the fourth carbon. That's where this nucleophile is going to go. Then you bounce these electrons up and you swing them up there. So initially, what do you get? Well, you still get that enolate type deal. And then you get that new substituent on that fourth carbon. And then what it, you think would happen happens. This flips back to its carbonyl form. And the rest is history. Okay. So gang, so, so this would be just a one, four addition, not a Michael addition. I used to think all every one, four addition was a Michael addition, but it's just when you do a one, four addition with an enolate. Whew. All right, gang. I hope if you were a little confused or, you know, unsure about one, four additions and Michael additions, or were they the same? Were they different? Hopefully that's cleared up. Thank you so much for watching Joe Chem. Make sure to bounce over to jokechem.io. Same videos, but there are free worksheets free answers to those worksheets and, and uh, everything else you could possibly want. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.